You know what I realize I don't have? I don't have the Twitch chat pulled up right now. Oh, well, neither oh, do I. That's okay. So, what's up, everybody? Welcome to The Rockcast, episode two. The episode where we finally actually dive into the material and start sharing our thoughts. In reference to that, there is something we need to say uh, to make clear. Um, and this will probably change over time as we kind of figure out how we want to word it. That's okay. That's behind the scenes. That's for me to worry about and for you to not give a damn about. So, this is our little disclaimer. Can you even read that? Uh, I'll figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> so, we do not take any authoritative stance on the material covered within. We are only here to speak the material and provide our own input, interpretation, application, and understanding on the material. We do not place any implications here within on the material explicitly. Please go to the original sources at LL Research's website for the original transcripts and do your own research. We are only here to share the information to the extent of U.S. law and permissions provided to us by LL Research. We would suggest that if what we are speaking on this evening are of any interest to you, that you do your own research with the original material and other materials provided by LL Research. They also have this site as well. And do not take anything we say this evening as the only interpretation of the material as it was provided by Ra under their own distortions, and they claim that as such within the material. You can find all of our source materials at llresearch.org. I'm going to go ahead and put that in there again because it is suggested that you take only what resonates with you and work on it and not place much concern on the material that does not. So, very simple. Um, we just don't want to make it seem like we are the ones that brought this material forth or anything like that whatsoever as we are just fans of the material and really really appreciate the material i gotta pull this up there we go i can see chat now cool and i'm watching my own stream so let me figure out apple because i don't use it ah yes 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 so in in terms of the materials um i kind of glanced over the introductions of the original books um, which is different than that of the raw contact the raw contact is the one that i'm listening to personally um the original ones are completely different in terms of outside of the material um and the cool thing about the originals is they provide pictures of the original channel sessions which is pretty rad if you ask me and i was going to have something set up this episode uh, i didn't get around to doing it so it'll be next episode um, LL Research is posting uh, the original recordings on YouTube, which I've talked to you about before, and it is something to behold. Um, there was no video recording, it's all audio, and they have like the transcripts popping up, which is pretty cool, so please uh, check that out as well. Um, so the introduction within the Raw Contact gets a little more into how the Raw Contact, that version of the book, was made because it's different than the originals um, completely in terms of construction but I mean it still covers the same material because it's just raw talking um, and Jim McCarty has his own little dedication in there too which is super rad so I would recommend checking all of them out honestly uh, so is there anything you'd like to say? nope Oh, you good? Let's do this. Okay, cool. So this is where we're going to start diving into the actual material. And so what my intention was is to read what was said. And if we have anything to add on to it or anything to say about it, we'll go ahead and say that. And of course, I wish I had that so I could see chat, but I can't. Um, <laughs> I need to get a Windows laptop. And uh, if, if ever there's anyone in chat that has any questions during the live broadcast, we would love to be able to answer them. Of course, uh, if you can't make it to the lives, you come to the podcast audio recordings on your favorite platform, or you come to the... Uh, I don't like how it's framed. Sorry. <laughs> you watch the YouTube recordings. 
Um, any comments that we see in there, we would love to either, uh, well, I mean, we'll answer them. Uh, depending on the brevity of the question, we might just respond to it in a response in a comment, or if it's something heavy, we will go ahead and answer it in the next episode. You good? Yep. Okay. So, we're going to go ahead and start this quick, easy, and dirty. The channel, or session one, and when you get into the material yourself, they kind of describe the setup, but it basically comes in, and Ra just comes in and says, I am Ra. I have not spoken through this instrument before. We had to wait until she was precisely tuned as we send a narrow band vibration. We greet you in the love and in the light of our infinite creator. We have watched your group. We have been called to your group, for you have a need for the diversity of experiences in channeling which go with a more intensive, as you might call it, advanced approach to the system of studying the pattern of the illusion of your body, your mind, and your spirit, which you call seeking the truth. We hope to offer you a somewhat different slant upon the information, which is always and ever the same. At this time, we would be glad to attempt to speak to any subject or question which those entities in the room may have potential use in the requesting. The one thing I want to say about this is what I spoke on before is Ra came out and said, we hope to offer you a somewhat different slant upon the information, which is always and ever the same. So what he's saying there is, I keep saying he, what Ra is saying is, I come to you providing our distortion, so our thought process, our, how we interpret the law of one. And that's what is always and ever the same is the law of one which Ra does describe later nope nothing you want to add no okay you're right all right well I mean, whether or not i'm right per se doesn't really change whether you have an input on what Ra speaks truths i mean yes that that is true <laughs> Their distorted version of truth, and distorted in this sense isn't a bad thing. Distorted in this sense is very much um, like a differing opinion of sorts. It's not like distorted reality like what we would see. And there's a lot of verbiage in here within the material in its entirety that comes across as good or bad, left, right, whatever. It's not because all is the same. All is one. So, simple. So, Don Elkins is the questioner. Carla is the channeler. She is in trance right now, and Ra is speaking through her mechanically. Um, Jim is actually... I don't think he was in these earlier ones, but I'm not 100% on that. It's not totally made clear to me, but when he is in the sessions, which is everything after the beginning, if not from the beginning, is... He is actually sitting in a chair meditating, and while he's meditating, um, he's focusing on light moving through Carla's energy centers as a source to provide her as much energy as he can, because they were in a romantic relationship at this time. And they talk about that with Ra as well. So, it's pretty cool. Yes. So we'll move on. Don asks, and in the books it says questioner, and then it says Ra, so we'll, we'll go as what the book says, questioner. Do you have a specific purpose? And if so, could you tell us something of what your purpose is? Ra responds, I am Ra. We communicate now. We are those who are of the law of one. In our vibration, the polarities are harmonized. The complexities are simplified. The paradoxes have a solution. We are one. This is our nature and our purpose. We are old upon your planet and have served varying degrees of success in transmitting the law of one of unity of singleness to your peoples. We have walked your planet. We have seen the faces of your peoples. However, we now feel the great responsibility of staying in the capacity of removing the distortions and powers that have been given to the law of one. We will continue in this until, shall we say, your cycle is appropriately ended. If not this one, then the next. We are not a part of time and thus are able to be with you in any of your times. Does this give you enough information from which to extract our purpose, my brother? 
sorry, I'm laughing because you said thus. That's an inside joke. So Ra came in and said, we are one, as everyone is one. And Ra speaks on this later in the fact that they came to Earth many years ago, as many are aware, as the sun god Ra to the Egyptians. And that's the references to they have walked among us. They have seen the faces of your peoples, our peoples. So questioner says, yes, thank you. Ra responds, we appreciate your vibrations. Is there another query? So questioner comes in, I've heard of the name Ra in connection with the Egyptians. Are you connected with this Ra in any way? Ra says, I am Ra. Yes, the connection is congruency. May we elucidate. What do you not understand? Another thing to keep in mind is Ra being of higher density, higher consciousness, is of not only much higher intelligence, but uses as much as they can our language to share what they have to say, which is extremely difficult, apparently, when you're an entity that does not speak at all. Uh, higher density entities speak purely through telepathy. Yep. <laughs> so Ra basically says, yes, I was the sun god Ra. So questioner says, could you give me a little more detail about your role with the Egyptians? I am Ra. The identity of the vibration Ra is our identity. We as a group, or what you would call a social memory complex, made contact with the race of your planetary kind, which you call Egyptians. Others from our density made contact at the same time in South America, and the so-called Lost Cities were their attempts to contribute to the Law of One. We spoke to one who heard and understood and was in a position to decree the Law of One. However, the priests and peoples of that era quickly distorted our message, robbing it of the, shall we say, compassion with which unity is informed by its very nature. Since it contains all, it cannot abhor any. When we were no longer able to have appropriate channels through which to enunciate, my apologies, the law of one, we removed ourselves from the now hypocritical position which we had allowed ourselves to be placed in. Other myths, shall we say, having more to do with polarity and the things of your vibrations that are complex, again, took over in that particular society complex. Does this form a su sufficient amount of information, or could we speak further? Is there another query? So, Ra comes in and says, We came down, we worked with the Egyptians to share the law of one, which they are doing now with LL Research in the 80s. And, as, as they said, the people at the time took that and as happened throughout history, whenever your people hear something amazing, they take it and put it towards people of power. Like rich people and in the case of the Egyptians, probably pharaohs and, and people of that nature are like, oh, this is obviously for you because we are lesser than. Why did you say pharaoh weird? I've always said it like that. That's too weird. I'm sorry. <laughs> Anything you you get out of that? Mm. <laughs> Just move on. Move on for now. We'll go back through it, I'm sure. Uh, no, definitely not, because there's a lot of material here. Oh, well. You're supposed to be listening when I'm talking. I am. I'm, I'm also reading along with you. <laughs> but it's a lot to take in, especially since I haven't been able to read it. <laughs> well, we have a week between episodes, so we got to find the time. Basically, what I can take out of it is kind of like... I can hear myself perfectly fine. It's not about if you can hear yourself. <laughs> It's kind of like those weird stories that you hear, like, I caught this big of a fish, and then the next person says, I caught this big of a fish, and blah, 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 and it starts getting bigger and bigger, and starts getting, quote-unquote, distorted. So the story that was brought down from Ra 
the person whom they spoke to brought it to others and it got distorted in a way to where it became different and people are going to use it for their own power same with everything yeah you know the teachings of jesus and moses and yeah all of them which ironically enough are within the material as well you look like you're like jacking yourself off well i had a scratch <laughs> okay so as as everyone will learn within the material there are times that some content won't have been caught by the uh the recorders mm-hmm. um, welcome to the tapes in the 80s right if you weren't close enough good luck right and the what i found interesting about it and i don't know if they change this over time but they had three microphones eventually i don't know if this was right away taped to carla during the channeling so they could catch what Rao was saying and why they did three was because of carla's energies during the sessions i'm assuming and after and before she would short them out so they we talked a little bit about that last time did we yep okay because well, i talked about how ghosties take things right there's there's nothing wrong with reiteration here because there's a lot going on um so those microphones were on her and not on don mm-hmm. so when you if you don't speak loud enough good luck exactly it's <laughs> not like these fancy microphones we have right now where i can probably put it on my desk over there and you'll still hear me fine he says as he just moved this closer to me that's because you talk quiet you talk quiet okay <laughs> let's just make this about me <laughs> okay so this is a perfect example where the question was lost so Ra comes in says I am Ra consider if you will science burp that the universe is infinite this has yet to be proven or disproven but we can assure you that there is no end to yourselves your understanding what you would call your journey of seeking or your perceptions of the creation that which is finite cannot that which is infinite cannot be many for manyness is a finite concept to have infinity you must identify or define the infinity as unity otherwise the term does not have any reverent or meaning in an infinite creator there is only unity you have seen simple examples of unity you have seen the prism which allows all colors stemming from the sunlight this is a simplistic example of unity in truth there is no right or wrong there is no polarity for all will be as you would say reconciled at some point in your dance through the mind body spirit complex which you amuse yourself by distorting in various ways at this time this distortion is not in any case necessary it is chosen by each of you as an alternative to understanding the complete unity of thought which binds all things. You are not speaking of similar or somewhat like entities or things. You are everything, every being, every emotion, every event, every situation. You are unity. You are infinity. You are love light, light love. You are. This is the law of one. May we enunciate in more detail. I wish Don would have said yes. Because <laughs> he comes in and says no. Because this is what Ra is saying is the law of one. Yes. Everyone is everything. And everything, when, it all, when you boil it all down, back to the core, back to source, is love. Yep. There's and no, light. There's no love. No, no, no. Source is love. Okay. Because it all comes together. Okay. You're Everything right. in, in existence is love. Which, when it branches out... Okay, I shouldn't have said no. I apologize. My perception is, as consciousness breaks down into the many levels, that's when the light comes in. Because love is love. It is what it is. It's everything. And then the light is wisdom Rod talks about this later too and fourth density is the density of love hence the heart chakra and 
which is what our planet is in now mm -hmm. and what a lot of people are experiencing. We're in the transition phase. It's a bitch. It'll be okay. Fifth density is that of light. Sixth density is that of both of them being perfectly balanced. So, and this is why negative polarities, in a sense, skip over fourth by just completely erasing it. I'm not. Even after watching Aaron stuff and listening to the first half of the raw material, that still doesn't make, it hasn't been made clear to me of how that's possible. It might not make sense to you now, but later on it might. It might it, because your silly human brain can't figure it out. True. And I'm not just saying, like, you specifically. Like, just, I don't get it either. Yeah. But. Because when you, when you follow the positive path, which is, ironically, the easier path, even though it kind of goes against what Ra is saying here specifically, the positive path is easier. And he gets into it later, and Ra gets into more detail. After having said the law of one, which is there is no positive or negative. There is no left and right. There is no up and down. There is no right or wrong. But then goes into explaining the different paths. So I think what Ra was mentioning there was the law overarching in general, which applies to reaching the octave eighth density when you start over which kind of blows me away when you think about it because we all came from source but just this octave is a thing so how many octaves are there to get back to source we know each octave has seven densities. And after this octave, everything starts over. Mm -hmm. So is it just endless? Or do we actually eventually go back to source? And maybe that's the octave. And he's like, great job, do it again. You know what it I mean? It might be. Because Ra is sixth density. Yeah. Ra doesn't know much about seventh at no. all. In fact, I believe Ross says they don't know of Seventh, except for what their higher selves have told them. Because uh, I know at least Sixth. I don't know about Fifth. It's been a while. At least six and above, time is of no relevance. Fifth is the same way. Did that, does that start Fifth? Because Fourth is not. Fourth no. is still light. Yes. You're, I mean, everyone's light. But Fourth, you, you still inhabit... A physical. You no, know, fifth is body. where the telepathy starts happening, and it happens in fourth as well. It can, but not always. Higher fourth. Yeah, so fifth is more of like set in stone telepathy. There's no time. Blah blah blah. That would make sense. Thank you. And another thing that said is everything is happening at one time. Mm hmm Because there is no time. Time is a concept of third density. Mm -hmm. So that plays in the manifestation. We can talk about that later. So yeah, there's just a lot in that one statement about the law of one. Uh, da -da -da -da. So Ra asks, so there's another question, and then Don comes in and says, can you comment on the coming planetary changes in our physical reality? And, and before I get into Ra's response... Um, which isn't much this time because when it's asked later uh, I want to preface again I think I said this in the last episode that Ra has a hard time with numbers of years so time frames because time, doesn't, cause time exist. doesn't exist so Ra is trying to interpret it so I am Ra I prefer to wait Till this instrument had again reached a proper state of death of singleness or one-pointedness before we speak. The changes are very, very trivial. We do not concern ourselves with the condition which bring about harvest. The harvest is the event that Don was speaking of. Mm -hmm. um, and it lines up with the Mayan calendar, which also lines up with Ra saying other higher density entities 
came down to South America. Yes. And the lost cities. Well, the lost cities he's speaking of are the lost city. Yeah. Atlantis. Isn't the Mayans technically a lost city too? Yes, but they also talk, Ra talks specifically about Atlantis. Oh, okay. As well as a whole hell of a lot more that is going to blow your mind. That was really loud in my ears. That was the idea. That hurt. I apologize. <laughs> It'll happen more than once. I'm audio sensitive and photosensitive. Here, here let, me, let me turn down your headphones. Thank you. Now I can't hear myself at all. <laughs> okay. So Rod does talk about this later. But Rod doesn't... Turn it up. Did I? I'm sorry. I'll turn it down. How's that? That's perfect. Okay, cool. I won't touch it again. Um, when Ra gets into this later, there is a lot of a lot of stuff. Um, and I'm assuming Ra doesn't concern themselves with Harvest because not only does it not really apply to them because theirs has already happened, but it's going to happen anyways, so suck it up and deal with it. Yeah, pretty much. And like, it did happen. Yeah, I mean, like, it's going to happen, so... It was... Okay. When Ross speaks on it later, they call out the year 2011. Yeah. Which we all know in this area of spiritual education, whatever the hell you want to call us, um, are now aware that that was the whole end of the world thing in 2012. The Mayans were <laughs> spoken to... Had given the information. I got another burp coming. It's all this coke. <laughs> the the minds are spoken to you, and we're we're able to decipher the year twenty twelve. Whether it was actually that date, December twenty first or whatever it was. Anyways. Well, the date came from the Mayan can calendar as well. Uh huh. Because so, that's when it ended. Yeah. And that the Mayans would have built their calendar on what these higher density beings yeah. educated them with, which is all astrological stuff anyways. Yep. So it does it does all make sense. I just don't remember that date right now. Also, um, if you kind of to a fact, that was the wrong words. That's okay. If you think about it, uh -huh. they might have been correct because in, I think it was... Greek or Roman times? Greek. Augustus, right? Is that... No. Is that Roman? That's more your area. Anyway, some dude named Augustus. Augustus Gloop? <laughs> no. No, that's Harry Potter. Yeah. Is it? No! <laughs> it's Charlie the Chocolate Factory. <laughs> Whatever. Besides the point. <laughs> well, we have the month August because of him. Yeah? Yes. So it used to be just January, February, March, April, May, June, July. September? September, October, November, December. He added that month because of him. So, with that month taken out, you know, time is different. Yeah. So we have more days in a year. We have 30 extra days in a year. 31? Did that actually add days to the year, or he added was in. the year just ever changing back then before August was like, or Augustus was like, hey, why is the sun over there when it should be here? No, he was very, very egotistical and wanted something after himself to have leave a legacy. Is that accurate? I don't know how accurate it is. It's just in the history books. Which is written by the winner, so who knows? Exactly. All I'm saying is when, when you look at it that way, without August, which this, was this before Egyptians? Um, no. This is after Egyptians. After Egyptians, it was during, like, the Jesus time. So 2,000 years ago. About, yeah. That's Jesus time. About, Yeah. So, I'm, I'm, I'm having a hard time understanding the reference here. So, the Mayans are not a part of that. Right, they so, had a 12-month calendar. Yes. 
but it might be different because of this dude. I don't know. Maybe I'm making just a really poor reference. I don't know. I'm trying to find a connection. Maybe they named it after Augustus because the Mayans called it something different. But they didn't get the calendar from the Mayans. No, they got the calendar from whichever entity came down and spoke to them. I would assume, since it lined up perfectly with the transition from third and the fourth entity. It probably came from the Egyptians. But this happened at the same time. Ra and this other entity were at the same time. Well, the first time, 11,000 years ago. Yeah. I don't know. I'm, maybe I'm just making poor connections. I don't know. I don't know either. That's something we can look into, though. You can look into. Maybe, was his name even Augustus? Probably. <laughs> so you go ahead and do that. I'm going to move on to the next uh, raw statement here. Okay. So Don asks, if an individual makes efforts to act as a catalyst in general to increase the awareness of planetary consciousness, is he of any aid in that direction, or is he doing nothing but acting upon himself? Ah, uh, see, they just changed the name. Okay, my so apologies. So it's first called Sextilla. Sextilia. Sextilla? August is Sextilia. the eighth month. That doesn't make sense to me, because sex is six. The Roman word for six is it was the sixth month of the Roman year. It was later changed to August. By Emperor Augustus. And it, he named it after himself. So the month already existed. He just renamed it because yes, probably an but why is it the sixth? It's not anymore, though. August is the eighth month. Yeah, that's why I'm confused now. I don't think that... I don't think... Where oh, hold on. There's ten months of the, of the Roman calendar. Ten months were Martius, Aprilis, Maius, Junius, Quintilis, Sextilis, September, October, November, and December. <laughs> so the first half are super weird, and then the end is like, okay, we still use these today. Well, the first half are all the Roman numbers. One, two, three, four, five, six. Or first, second, third, fourth. The last fifth, six, six names were taken from the words for five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Romulus, the legendary first ruler of Rome, introduced this calendar in the 700s BCE. What does that even stand I know BC was supposed to be like before Christ. Yeah, that's. I think that's the same thing. What does the E stand for? I have no idea. So this is actually 10,000 years after Ra's initial contact. But I was right. It was Rowan. <laughs> right, you were. <laughs> Which I said, this was your area, so I fully expected you to be accurate. Nice little side note, though. It's interesting, the different calendars that existed, and now the whole world goes with the 12-month Mayan calendar. Roman ruler Numa with Pompulus. Roman Numa Pompulus added January and February to the calendar. This made the Roman calendar year 355 days long. To make the calendar correspond approximately to the solar year, Numa also ordered the addition every other year of a month called Mercedinius. Mercedinius was inserted after February 23rd or 24th, and the last days of February were moved to the end of Mercedinius. In years when it was inserted, Mercedinius added 22 or 23 days to the year. So instead of having a leap year, they had... Or instead of having a, a leap year of a day, they had a leap year of basically an extra month. Yeah. That's so inefficient. Honestly, I think leap years are dumb, but when you're a day off, I guess that's all you can really do. I don't know. It might be weird to be two years old. You get it? You get it? You get it? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> so the Romans did eventually get to a 12 month calendar it looks goofy too I wish we could share this but we may have to do that when we get a producer or something 
where all of our computers are connected to. So the Roman calendar is a system of months and special days in each month. Some calendars were carved in marble or stone. Many were painted on walls. Different geo oh my god geographical areas often held different gods in special esteem, and this sense. led to the regional variations in each calendar. That's so inefficient, but it makes sense at the time when you it's think the about Romans. the lack of communication, though, too. You know, everything is so unified now because everybody can communicate with anybody. Yeah, and they were using the moon for it, and then they stopped using it because they just went with the gods instead of the moon. Oh. Interesting. I wonder if anyone has ever channeled Greek or Roman gods. Like if those entities ever actually existed. They're the same thing. The Romans just stole them. But if those entities <laughs> ever existed or if it was just mythos. And who cares? The North gods are the best ones anyways. No. <laughs> it's the Egyptians. We all know it. Oh, because of Ra. No. No? No. Is it because of Anubis? No. The giant dog? It's a jackal, but no. My apologies. Are you ready to continue yes. with what we're here for? Yeah, I'm sorry. That's okay. <laughs> I will go ahead and, uh, and uh, read the question again. <laughs> if an individual makes efforts to act as a catalyst in general to increase the awareness of planetary consciousness, is he of any aid in that direction, or is he nothing but acting upon himself? And you'll notice that Don does use some interesting verbiage as well but i think that might have just been the words at the time which is it's fair. the 80s it is the 80s everything's different in the 80s oh, so many things so i am raw no you're not i am not we shall answer your question in two parts both of which are important to, important equally Firstly, you must understand that the distinction between yourself and others is not visible to us and what Ra is saying because they exist in the law of one density. Everything is one. We are one. There is no separation. There is only unity. That's specifically what Ra is speaking of. Uh, I lost my spot. <laughs> we do not consider that a separation exists between the conscious consciousness raising efforts of the distortion which you project as a personality and a distortion that which you project as another personality so yourself and another person every time i look away i lose my spot i really gotta get off this apple thus to learn is the same as to teach unless you are not teaching what you are learning in which case you have done you them little good this understanding should be pondered by your mind, body, spirit complex. Before I keep reading on that, we are mind, body, spirit complexes. You have a mind, you have a body, we have a spirit, and we are complex. Yes. <laughs> the mind, body, spirit complex, as it is a distortion which plays a part in your experiences at this nexus, this time frame. To turn to the second part of our response, may we state our understanding, limited though it is. <coughs> Group individuated consciousness is that state of sharing, understanding with the other distortions of mind-body-spirit complexes, which are within the evident reach of the mind-body-spirit complex, individual, or group. Thus, we are speaking to you and accepting both our distortions and your own in order to enunciate the laws of creation more especially the law of one we are not available to many of your peoples for this is not an easily understood way of communication <laughs> oh goodness or type of philosophy and Ra, i believe is speaking there directly on how they communicate because they don't speak in language they speak with telepathy and also the deepness of this material. But my question is, is how do they speak in telepathy? Is that just kind of like beep, 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 beep? Morse code? Yeah. 
I have a feeling the way I've understood it, and I've gotten more into this material. Or is it just like energy waves? It's definitely, I mean, higher density beings inhabit the realm of light. They're just light beings, pure consciousness floating around. So, the way I've imagined it the whole time is like when you speak to yourself or your inner self the ego which we all got to worry about or the higher self or you're spoken to by what some people would call the holy spirit or some other entity that isn't yourself so the way you basically the way you hear yourself yeah and because they're energy forms in light they just kind of pop in and what you realize here within the materials every time Ra comes in they say I am Ra Mm -hmm. that's how they I don't remember if it was Aaron that spoke on it or Jim um, in an interview or somewhere I heard somewhere that when these higher densities communicate with each other they're familiar with the energies so the energy comes in and presents itself and says I am wrong without actually saying it. So it's more just a thought. It's an endless thought that's happening. But do they say that to each other? Like, I am wrong? No. I was like, I didn't think so. Because we technically named them. Yes. Um, Some of them have taken on titles. Um, Some of them. Like, wrong. Yeah, they took it on, and Ra speaks later on that there are entities within the Confederation that have no name. They have chosen to not take on a name. Because higher density, you lose all identity. I believe that happens in, like, high fourth, fifth area. And you start speaking more of we. Um, But it's, I mean, when you think, do you always think words? I don't know. Exactly. All I do know is if you think about it, our inner voices can sing perfectly. Absolutely, because they take on whatever you're replaying in your head. (laughs) (laughs) You just got to be able to train the body to do that, because everything you hear in your head, you can do. Everything you see in your head, you can do. The should is completely up to you. Um, Technically, every time I move, I am thinking. I'm going to move this. But I'm not thinking, okay, I'm going to move my hand over here now. I move my hand over there. I'm not thinking, like, muscles, do this, do that. Yeah, it's like, okay, now I'm going to pump my heart like this, or I'm going to blink at this point. Now that I'm thinking about it, now I'm going to think about it. I'm going to blink now. (laughs) And that's the craziness about us being just consciousness, thoughts, whatever, in these bodies and the t- the temporariness of it. I now I'm just going to continue word. to blink too much. How temporary everything is and how unreal all of this is. The only reality, according to Ra and other spiritual gurus, is that of love. Love is the only thing that's real. Everything else is a distortion of that or absence of it. There is no darkness. There is only absence of light. There is no suffering. There is only absence of love. Which is something when you get in yourself internally as like instinctual, holy shit balls, your life takes a turn. And it is a difficult, difficult process, especially now there's so much shit going on. And the ego. The ego is the biggest thing. And the ego is part of the evolutionary process. We have no choice but to have the ego because it came from second density. Damn that density. (sighs) But without it, we wouldn't be here. You know, each one of us has existed already for millions of years. Mm -hmm. How many cycles have you had as a human? Who knows? How many were you part of Maldek? Who knows? It could have been a cow. Could have been. No. Could have been. But you don't go back. No. Not like the Indian thing. Is it Indian? A lot of... Like uh, Hinduism? <laughs> like if you don't do something right? Yeah, you're not going to go back to second density you're gonna as reincar- a I was going to say you're going to reincarnate as something lower because of a yeah, karma. No, and, and, and 
the Law of One materials and other gurus in the Law of One, and Aaron especially, um, you're not going to go down a density because there's no reason to. The whole point of third density is choice. You choose... I thought some fourth densities come back to third density. Yes. Fourth, fifth, sixth. Have all come back. And in but fact, that's on free will. Well, yeah, everything's free will. But is, I'm, I'm just saying, like, in Hinduism, it's not free will. You aren't just slapped there for karma. Oh, yeah. I mean, whatever Eastern religion uh, speaks on it is, yeah, the, the, the karmic relations are all going to stay where you are. So either one of us could be fourth, fifth, sixth density. There is a way to kind of figure that out. Wanderers. Wanderers, yes. And they are spoken of in the, in the material to some detail. Um, there are ways to open that up. And usually it's a self-realization that kind of comes out of nowhere from what I've heard. If anyone's coming to you and saying, oh, I'm star child plus negative whatever from the Pleiades, that's ego. They're full of shit. And that's the nicest way I can think of saying it right now. Because wanderers are here for a purpose, and when they realize that, their only purpose in life is to do that purpose. Like Jesus? Jesus was a high, very, very high fourth density. To the point where Jesus came back already fully capable of ascending into fifth but made the decision that i'm going to come down and share this information and jesus is like the be all end all guru of manifestation i mean it's written in the bible just in language that's been frou-froued through history because of translations interpretations because of the Romans. dickhead kings Stuff like that, but when you when you look, especially when you dig into the Gospels, and I'm getting into this a lot with Aaron's content, holy shit. Especially his Moving Backwards series. I'm in the middle of that right now, and holy fuck, dude. Because he's saying Jesus was speaking purely of the law of one, love, and manifestation. You keep speaking of him, you should share it. Aaron? Hey, Aaron? Right there. <laughs> but that link... Uh, that image there is actually to the Law of One series. But I'm sure you can use YouTube. Yeah, because I have a link to his page, too. If you can use podcasts, you can use YouTube. Hell, they're probably watching us on YouTube now, anyways. <laughs> uh, i got to remember to put those links in the description all the time. But, anyways, minor detail. Fuck me, dude. Jesus was a straight-up G. Like, when you're talking spiritual guru in, in terms of, like, the law of attraction and manifestation, Jesus was, like, the man. I don't know the verses at all. Because as much as I was raised Christian, I completely hated the Bible. Until I got the New Life version, which made it plain English so I could understand it, but I still didn't understand it. Right? As plain English as it was, it was like, huh? Why is it necessary to tell me the generations of people? <laughs> if you are a Christian, or even a Catholic, or a Jew. I was what? raised as all three. Crazy how that happens. <laughs> Look at you now. You're now free. I hated all three. The law of one is the purest form of freedom. Bar none. Watch Aaron's series moving backwards. Because he literally goes through the Bible and takes the fundamentalist viewpoint on Christianity and just tears it to shreds in the kindest way possible, actually, mind you, with facts verbatim from the Bible. And when he came out and said, Jesus never said a damn thing about hell, I was just like, you're right. He didn't. He didn't. Nothing in that Bible. Says hell. Says, well, from Jesus. Even in reference to hell in the Bible, if you look at it for words, and if you go back to the original definitions of the words used, 
is not eternal damnation in hellfire and brimstone. No. It is suffering. Which, what happens when you're dealing with ego? That's why people say the world is hell. Because we're all suffering through it. But are we? I mean, we're suffering through some parts. The, Which is the, just part, I feel like that's just part of the learning process of how to properly polarize. You're going to suffer through yes. things. So like me, I have an issue with self-love, so I'm suffering through that. That's to help me get to the next density, so well, I can positively polarize myself to get through that. Well, no, the the next density is not going to positively polarize well, you. You positively polarize yourself to get to, well, that's what I not even positively, you just polarize yourself. If you want to go negative, go ahead. And but good on you because that is fucking impossible. Which Ross speaks on. <laughs> suffering. I feel like suffering is another one of those words that we humans use. That Like distortions. Like distortions has the good and bad. Mm. Suffering has the good and bad. Negative has the good and bad. Well... Me, personally, I wouldn't say suffering is good and bad. Suffering is just suffering. It sucks. But suffering is ego. But there's also good things with suffering. In accordance to the law of one, how? Because it helps you learn. But if you take that learning experience and don't let it cause you pain, which is suffering, and use it and interpret it in a way of love as in like for instance something shitty happens to you let's say someone's being a dickhead to you that is not a problem for you whatever they say about you is not true Mm -hmm. that is a distortion that they have that they're going through that is suffering they're experiencing you can make the conscious choice to not accept the suffering and take that as an example of another another person easier when you are able to see people as the creator which is difficult to get to but if you take that as a moment of just saying you, you, you take negative situations you absorb them in and you analyze them from a distance you don't analyze with thoughts or emotions you just analyze what happened without judging. No judgment. Can't, can't have judgments. Unless, of course... Well, no. I don't think that works for negative polarity either. It's non-biased. Definitely non-biased. No judgment. So you can take anything bad that happens to you and make it a positive because you can be like, that's not about me. That's a problem with them. And you can either choose to accept what they're saying or doing to you as part of you, part of your problem. And that's just going to cause you suffering. Or you can take that as in that person is suffering and have empathy for them. That's Could positive. Be. Those are a couple options. Or you could also go the psychological way. Continue. Well, like, for example, I'm watching Hoarders right now. Uh-huh. And they are going through their houses being cleaned. Holy crap, cleaned. And they are... Like that TikTok account? (laughs) But they are suffering through that because they're losing all their stuff. Ego. Yes. But it's, it's still a positive suffering because you are changing the way your brain works so you don't continue doing that. But if you... That I'm in the psychological field. That's a positive suffering. I, I get what you're saying. Mostly because I'm very familiar with your, what you're talking on. Because of you, so thank you. <laughs> but also in reference to the law of one, there is no positive suffering. No, I know. But, but like in our density... what you're saying applies in, 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 in the restrictions of our language. Yeah. Um, like your positive and negative reinforcements. Mm-hmm. Like you think reinforcement is just a good thing, period. Well, in ABA and psychology, it ain't. Negative reinforcement does not mean bad. Right. It also means good. So 
like, yeah, they are going through suffering and they can choose to decide to let them suffer or they can be like, this is what I needed. I had a problem. I'm fixing it. And then take the positive side, take the positive route. They're no longer suffering. They may be suffering in the moment until they have that realization like this was not the way to live. At that point, once they accept that and accept the distortions that they were going through, they're not suffering anymore. You're only suffering at the time, so at that time it is negative. Yes, it can lead to a positive result, but the suffering itself is not positive. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yep. It could also cause an extinction burst, but... Yeah, Psychology. <laughs> it's not just ABA. It's all psychology. <laughs> I kind of lost where we were here. Um, so I'm just going to pick uh, starting uh, the second part again. To turn to the second part of the response, may we state our understanding, limited though it is, group individuated consciousness is that state of sharing understanding with the other distortions of mind-body-spirit complexes, which are within the evident reach is that the right word I can't see? Yes. yes. Evident reach of the mind, body, spirit, complex, individual, or group. Thus, we are speaking to you and accepting both our distortions and your own in order to enunciate the law of creation, more especially the law of one. We are not available to many of your peoples, for this is not an easily understood way of communication or type of philosophy, because humans are so stuck on monotheism, especially modern times. Yes. However... Our very being is hopefully a poignant example example of both the necessity and the near hopelessness of attempting to teach. Each of those in this group is striving to use, digest, and diversify the information which we are sending this instrument, Carla, into the channels of the mind-body-spirit complex without distortion. The few whom you will illuminate, right here, right there, by sharing your light are far more... I gotta sneeze. It's coming. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, the few whom you will illuminate by sharing your light, your wisdom, are far more than enough reason for the greatest, pe- the greatest possible effort. And that's the way I feel about this podcast. If this podcast helps one person, including yourself... It is more than enough for me. Mm-hmm. And I will cry for everyone that it helps. Because it's fucking awesome. It's kind of like, you know, you wave at someone and let them go on the road, and it makes their day. Mm-hmm. Oh, speaking of that, I gave food to a homeless guy today. Nice. It was some hella synchronicity. Because I went to Taco Bell. I'm going to tell the story real quick, because I feel good about it. <laughs> and I'm not trying to boast, but I'm explaining. Weird flex, but okay. Uh, I'm not flexing. I'm explaining a moment of synchronicity. I know. I'm just being a butt. Which is basically saying there are no shit. Surprise circumstances. What's the word I'm trying to think of? For synchronicities? Yeah. Um, things are happening for a reason yes. at the, the well, same time? Yes, synchronicities. Things happen for a reason. There is no randomness to it. So I went to Taco Bell. And I got a five layer and a beef burrito. And for some reason, I don't know why, I had the urge to order something I've never in my life ordered before. A quesadilla. A steak quesadilla from Taco Bell. Well, you also like to explore. I do, but not with their steak because it sucks. You're right. You said steak. You hate their steak. Their steak is trash. In fact, most of their food is trash, but... Their steak is delicious. Side note, I never get their steak. <laughs> I know you don't. And I've tried it numerous times over the years. They've Every different it. iteration, I've tried it all. I don't like it. For some reason, I got it. I have no idea why. I was just like, oh, okay. Boop. I used the kiosk. Oh, okay. I didn't and know Taco so, Bell had kiosks. Yeah, 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 yeah. I've never been inside one Mo- recently. Most of most rest, most fast food joints are doing it now. Especially the big chains. I don't think Burger King has them yet anyways. I don't go to BK that much anyway. Uh, chicken fries, though. Chicken fries. Um, so <laughs> I get the steak quesadilla, and I'm driving around, and I'm eating my 5 liter, which I added rice to. Delicious. 
I had that after my beef burrito, so I finished the whole beef burrito because it was a dollar one. And I get down to like a chunk of the beefy five layer, and I put that in the bag. I wrap it up. I'm full. I'm done. So I'm driving around. I finish my runs. I finish what I'm doing. And on the way back, I'm thinking, why the hell did I get that quesadilla? Like, I'm not going to eat that. Why would I eat those quesadillas? And the day before, I wasn't prepared for it. And today I was. So the day before, yesterday, I was driving to uh, UPS. And there's a guy, you know, it's happening a lot now. But there's people on main intersections asking for things. And he came up to me, and I'm like, bro, I don't keep cash on me. This is a work van. Like, I don't have anything for you. I'm sorry. And, uh, I, I mean, I felt bad. So to, uh, I'm sitting there with this damn quesadilla, and I'm just like, how crazy would it be if I came up on someone on the street right now? The next intersection, there's a guy there. And I pull up to him. I was supposed to go straight. I actually turned left so I could talk to this guy. I pulled up to him like, bro, you hungry? He's like, yeah, I'm here. I'm always hungry, man. I was like, you want a quesadilla? He's just like, yes. Boom. So what I couldn't do yesterday, I made up for today. And something compelled me, obviously, my higher self or some sort of other being. I'm, I'm going to go with higher self because it's easier for me to understand it that way. Said, get this quesadilla because there's a man on the street corner that is going <laughs> to need it today. Spasm. <laughs> and I did it. And I thought nothing of it. And then later, I, I go back, because I'm on Mulford, so I turned left on the state and went back through the, the strip mall to get back on the Mulford. And then I thought nothing of it until I was almost to the lab. And I'm just like, just had this overwhelming, like, calm and acceptance of, like, you did a thing for somebody today. It's like me saying, like, I went to Taco Bell after work one night. I think I told you about it. And there was a, literally an old lady. She's probably, like, in her 70s, 80s on the corner yeah. in the middle of the snow. It was snowing. And she was just out there having a cute little sign going, God bless. You know, and I was just like, I made four U-turns just so I could get to her. Nice. Just so I, could, I, didn't, I had cash. For once, I had like five ones. I'm like, I don't have much else, but I made these fucking YouTubers for you. So, yeah, right. <laughs> I was like, these poor little ladies should not be on the corner of the streets no. in the middle of a snowstorm in downtown Rockford. Yeah, I don't think anybody should be on the street, really. And 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 the unfortunate thing of it is, there's a lot of places that help that. Some of these people want nothing to do with it, and that's okay. And you my know, mom free will and all gave that. me a link. Where it's like part of like the Rockford mission, where they go out and find these people and try and help them. So I sent a little link going, "Hey, there's this is where this lady was, and I haven't seen her since." Oh, okay. But hopefully that's a good thing and not a bad thing. Yeah. I mean, because you never know. Because Joel was news. jumped just the other day, just walking to Taco Bell. Oh, great. Yeah, and there's those people too, and those are. The unfortunate ones that uh, have not achieved much spiritual polarization, which is unfortunate. Or there are the ones going the negative route, but even then the negative route still does not infringe on free will. And when you injure another for personal gain, or any any way in general, you are not polarizing. <sighs> to serve one is to serve all. Talk about perfect timing. <laughs> Therefore, we offer the question back to you to state that indeed it is the only activity worth doing to learn, teach, or teach, learn. There is nothing else which is of aid in demonstrating the original thought except your very being. And the distortions that come from the unexplained, inarticulate, or mystery-clad being are many. Did I skip a line? No. No, I did not. I said that funny, though. Thus, to attempt to discern and weave your way through as many group, mind, body, spirit distortions as possible among your peoples in the course of your teaching is a very good effort to make. 
We can speak no more valiantly of your desire to serve. May we speak in any other capacity upon the subject. I'm basically thanking them for Ow. having the desire to serve. Which if everybody did, god damn this world would be a better place. There's so much selfishness in this world, and it really sucks. So Rob basically says they're like, serve others, man. Serve others, thanks for communicating. We appreciate it. Thank you, come again. No. <laughs> to serve one is to serve all. Jesus says, I'm not going to become one of those people. But <laughs> Jesus says, uh... To serve the least of these, you serve me. Or something along those lines. I don't remember when it was. Like I said, I'm not that person. But Jesus basically said, you didn't help me when I was... You didn't feed me when I was hungry. You didn't uh, give me water when I was thirsty. You didn't visit me when I was in jail. You didn't clothe me when I was naked. And the people around and the apostles, whomever, were like... You never did that, dude. Like, what the hell? If you were there, you know, we would have done that for you, but you weren't. And that's when he says, to serve the least of these, you serve me. Verbatim, law of one. Right there. From Jesus. Yep. I love it. I love it. Thank you, Aaron, by the way. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Do you have anything you want to add there? No. Okay. So, questioner, will you be available to, for, or, sorry, will you be available for communication? Can we call on you in the future? Ra says, I am Ra. We have good contact with this instrument because of her recent experiences with trance. This was new to Carla. She, um, she had channeled before, but Ra is the first time where she did an out-of-body, you know, completely... Uh, unconscious channel. Almost like AP. Because you can AP into different dimensions. Absolutely. I mean, that's exactly what it is. Is your, your consciousness going to another dimension. Same with when you dream. Um, I don't know if they ever talk about if Carla ever says where she was. Uh, she just was not in her body. She was completely gone. It was raw and raw only using Carla as an instrument to make noise. Um, so yeah, they, they get into that quite a bit. She is to be able to communicate our thoughts in your future. So yes, we can keep communicating. However, we advise care in disturbing the channel, Carla, for a few moments and then the proper procedure for aiding an instrument uh, who has, to some extent, the need of re-entering the mind-body-spirit complex. So Ra is saying she's going to need time to re-enter her body. Which the instrument has chosen for the life experience of this time-space. What Carla's higher self chose uh, for her to live in this cycle. Uh, it's the last sentence. I know, I just... Do you understand how to nurture this instrument? I just completely lose my space because it's just white text on a black wall here. I can't move it. Oh. It's all the way down. Oh. It's, it's horrible. I don't like Apple anymore. So um, so Don says, no, could you explain it? Is there anything you want to add to that at all? No. Like any sort that's, of personal? That's pretty simple. Yeah, it, fairly. Um, so another thing to keep in mind, Ra chooses to only communicate in question and answer format because Ra feels like that is the best way to not infringe upon free will which is a huge thing for polarization and Ra actually later on you probably don't know this because you haven't gotten into it much but uh, Ra actually hinders their polarity to answer a question for Don as they get more connected hmm Super, super cool, super interesting because you're thinking, oh, it's Ra, some sort of god figure, or whatever, and they're not. That's why they left Earth, um, because they're being Ra, the sun god, you know. They're being worshipped as a god, and that's not positive polarity at all. That's actually more so negative polarity. Yeah. 
um, Ra gives up some of that, which is insane. So Ra says, now, if you're reading the original uh, version, it does not have Ra come in and say, I am Ra here, which I found super interesting uh, because in the Ra Contact, I haven't actually read the Ra Contact. I'm listening to it, and they made some more alterations to the audiobook where every time Ra speaks, uh, Jim says that Ra says, I am Ra. But as you can see here in this text, Ra did not say that. Whether that is Ra actually not saying it or it's just not being caught in like the recording. A, that or just a misprint. Yeah, anything like that. I don't know. Um, like I said, uh, it is very, very highly suggested that if any of this, <sighs> my burps and farts included, resonates with you, please, please go to their website um, because that's where the information is. Um, <laughs> They have access to the material for free, uh, but if you want to support them, you can buy it in physical or audio form. Uh, it is uh, the Raw Contact, which is the updated one, is on Audible, and I believe they have some merch too. There's also another website called the Law of One Info, which is one that um, <coughs> that I. I apologize, I forget the man's name, um, that LL Research gave him explicit rights to the website and uh, uh, the information and do his own thing. I I want to look into that too. What website? That's the law of one dot info. Uh, Bring the Forth is another one of their sites uh, for LL Research. Um, it's like bringforth.org. Fourth, as in like four T H, yeah. I'm just seeing if there's actually merch. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Ebooks. Oh, merch on Etsy. Yeah, that's yeah. cute. Yeah, and then donations, obviously. They're pretty simple. Yep, yeah. nothing insane. Uh, just a small little outfit in Kentucky, I believe, still. I'm sure they probably have some really awesome rock quotes on there. Yeah. Yeah. So, cool. You can bring the fourth side. does have some merch in there. They're very, very plain. If you like plain text t-shirts. Yeah. Or tank tops. Or laptop sleeves. Mugs. Stickers. Bracelets. Or, like, they're, like, bar chain bracelets. Or a tote bag. Yeah. Very cool. Oh, that's so cute. They have 119 sales and rated five stars. That's what's up. Good job, LL Research. We suggest for a brief period of silence, then the repetition of the instrument's vibratory complex of sound in your density, which you call name. Repeat until an answer is obtained. <laughs> Then the laying on of the hands at the neck region for a brief period so that the instrument may recharge batteries which are not, shall we say, full of the essence of this particular field at this time. And finally, a gift of water into which the love of all present has been given. This will restore this entity, for her distortions contain great sensitivity towards the vibrations of love and the charged water will affect comfort. Do you now understand? Don says, not completely. So I will keep reading before we speak on it more. Ra, in this uh, text, says this time, I am Ra. We search your mind to find the vibration Alrak. And I put uh, in notes here, it's a possible nickname for Carla. I'm not sure because in the... It's, it's Carla backwards. It is Carla backwards. Um, and I had to get Alrak from the raw contact because are you looking up the name of Alrak? so in the raw contact uh, Jim says Alrak. it is I don't know if it's written as Alrak. I'm going to go with it is because in the original material it just had nickname in parentheses it was super interesting 
in it is this vibration from you which contains the largest amount of what you would call love others would call this entity carla first name of the channel uh i'm spacing on her last name right now i apologize uh carla it starts with an r carla rooker thank you um and in the <laughs> laugh at my failures it's okay you can tell this is my first podcast um in the law of one material the original one it said name in parentheses again so and then in the raw contact it said carla the charging of the water is done by those present placing their hands over the glass and visualizing the power of love entering the water this will charge the this will charge that very effective medium with those vibrations this instrument is at this time quite fatigued however her heart is such that she continues to remain open to us and useful as a channel this is why we have spent the time space explaining how the distortions of what you may call fatigue may be ameliorated like i said big words under no circumstances should this instrument be touched until she has responded to her name. I do not wish to take this instrument beyond her capacity for physical energy. It grows low. Therefore, I must leave this instrument. I'll leave you in the glory and peace of unity. Go forth in peace, rejoicing in the power of the one creator. I am Ra. Um, now, our itineraries are based on the original books which i thought would be wise because since i'm listening to the raw contact which was a re-release um the way jim talks about it is fucking beautiful so read it and listen to it and cross-reference both because they're both the same and different because all is one um i'll find out later but i'm fairly certain that they don't keep putting add an A in the original books. I'm not sure. We'll find out next week. There's a reason to come back. Um, but uh, in the Raw Contact, Ra says all the time add an A, which is a name for the creator, I believe. The, it's just really close to Adonai. Sa exact same thing. It's just a different way to say it. So smart ass. Most people know it as Adonai. So I've never heard of it until we got the angel tarot cards. From no. Me. Okay. Well, in the Christian world <laughs> that I grew up in, Adonai was never in my Bible. It was in our hymns. I didn't sing those. Yeah, I come to Lutheran slash Catholicism slash Mormonism slash. Contain and control monotheism. Like I have a now. I now have a song rolling in my brain. And, and it's horrible. <laughs> it's brainwashing. <laughs> and welcome to the Catholic Church. Brainwashing for power, and in my personal opinion, all monotheism. Because God is the source. In my opinion, bar none. Period. God equals source, period. Because Jesus said, I'm going to go back to this because this is all fresh in my head because I'm listening to it. When you see me. <laughs> with the cough. With the cough, totally. Because <laughs> Jesus was totally a stoner. When I mean, you, you see me, know. you see my father. Once again, verbiage of the time, translations, blah, blah, blah. Jesus was talking about source. You see God in Jesus because God is all of us. Because we are all source. It's part of Christ consciousness, which is fourth density consciousness. Crazy shit. Anything you got to say at the end? Did you want me to read this? What is that? This is Alrak. The meaning of Alrak? Yeah, sure. A person who is full of love. I'm going to turn this a little bit. 
Your beautiful emotions create harmony and balance for anyone who is lucky hold on, enough. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Are you on Urban Dictionary? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> so, meaningslike.com. Okay, because the way it started to talk, like, you are this and that, I'm just like, that sounds like Urban Dictionary. Well, no, it's... It, it starts out, Alrak is a person who is full of love. Your beautiful emotions create harmony and balance for anyone who is lucky enough to become your friend. Always graceful and charming when dealing with others. Your emotional intelligence is very high. Bringing people together for a common cause or to solve disagreements is part of your skills. Professionally, you can become an amazing mediator. Seeing both sides of a coin lets you constantly find new perspectives to solve any and all disagreements. It is easy to be gracious because you strive for balance. Knowing the importance of balance in your life makes you a good negotiator. Blah, 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 It's interesting how much, I mean, though my my knowledge is very limited on Carla as a person, because the only one still alive at this time is Jim. Most of that applied to her. Yeah. In, in, in my limited knowledge. So one of the things that is going to continue to happen that we that I find interesting and we will continue to elucidate on <laughs> is the fact that Don and Jim are obviously extremely concerned about Carla's well-being during all of this. And as it goes on, Ra speaks on it more and Ra even says like, thank you for being conscientious. Like this is a great thing you guys are doing. Don't stop, keep up the great work. Here's some minor adjustments, which we'll uh, learn on in the next session. And it's just really rad, man. I love this stuff. I love all of it. Did you hit your funny bone? Mm-mm. Oh, okay. So, what's your opinion on session one? It dives deep, but not too deep. I mean, it gets pretty deep pretty quick. It gets, like I said, it dives deep. Yeah. But not super deep immediately. Yeah. It's a lot of repetition. But Which that's only because... Well, yeah, but it's only because, one, it's very deep material. Yes. And two, it's, I don't understand this. Can you, like, tell me again easier? Right. And that, <laughs> that does happen a lot. And Ra even comes out and says, like, there are many ways we can, we can say this because Carla's... Uh, grasp on your language is very vast and like let's try this way do you understand now yep cool <laughs> or Don will be like Jim did you get that and Jim will be like um, can you maybe talk about this some more so it's super rad yeah I love this I mean this is all introductory I definitely I definitely enjoy the inner gl- glimpse yeah, the inner glimpse into what Carla's doing and how Ra's like, going to have to take care of this. Yeah, right. And it happens throughout. <laughs> like, the I want to continue to, I want to continue to help you so you can serve. So continue to help this because this is great. Yeah. And a, a different thing that I, I, just popped into my head is in the raw contact they talk about rob bouncing around to other people that were there and it wasn't here i don't know if i'm remembering like when that happened incorrectly we'll find out next week but raw like bounces around at the beginning it has to be at the beginning and it's like okay Mm -hmm. now we'll talk it's like they took it out at the beginning because they felt it was unnecessary whereas the raw contact they left it in there just because it happened um, so I don't know I just I found that interesting like the jumping around from person to person but not being able to communicate and also saying hey Carla's kind of worried about the channel um, and Ra has to basically come in and say like you're good enough don't worry about it we are a difficult signal to to receive um they're a narrow band channel that comes in towards Base. the top of the head, uh, angling towards the crown. That was spoke of directly in the raw contact, but not here. Basically, she started going, am I really good enough for this? Yeah. 
which is Self-doubt. more interesting. Ego. Yeah. Um, to me, that that wasn't spoken on in these original ones, but is in the raw contact. So I almost wonder if it would be wise for us to just use one versus the other or or what i'm not totally sure yeah. either way i'm going to suggest you pick your favorite we could also email them and find out um anything so i'm saying find out like why is this and this and this is that and this we could yeah just so we can have more clarification and they are very receptive to emails. They responded to me pretty quickly, um, which is cool. I talked to Gary, who is like the code director. I apologize if I get that wrong, but a big up. At L. I mean, there's only like five or six of them, I think. Small group. I mean, like they're basically operating out of a converted house, which is super rad. Uh, there's there's an interview in the series called we are channelers by another youtuber so please look that up too Uh, it's just a series called we are channelers Um, you can find that put it in chat if you'd like babe just look up uh we are channelers uh jim mccarty if i can spell channelers jim mccarty two c's A-R-T-Y. Huh, look at that. Right there. This one? Yep. They call us channelers. I apologize. I can't... I wish I could just hit... Click on share. Without opening up the YouTube thing. We're here. Send that in Discord, too, so I can put it in the uh, show notes. So, yeah, I think I think we covered everything. Yeah. Um, session one is very cool, and it only gets better. Um, man, Ra does not pull any punches when the question is asked. It is straight up yes or no, or um, there are higher density beings on your planet. <laughs> there are bases on the moon and in the ocean and it is insane i love it <sighs> any closing uh comments there sweetheart no nope. no nope. you good okay nothing more you want to say no nope. cool well this is going to conclude episode two of the raw cast um this will get better and better over time trust me uh this is great i love it and, uh, yeah, man, just check out the material. Go everywhere. Feel this out for yourself because it is going to completely change your thoughts on uh, our existence. Because it is so much more than just burps and farts. <laughs> so thanks for listening, everybody. We love you. And in the words of Ra, go in peace. And love and shit. (laughs) We'll see y'all next week.